uh, for the distal tibia, I think especially with the advent of uh, locking plates, which are basically, you know, fixators which are inside of the skin rather than fixators which are outside of the skin. And uh, the, the tibial pylon doesn't have the problems of eccentric loading as there is uh, for the uh, proximal tibia. So lock plates work um, sort of very well um, over here. And issues that come up are one with osteoporotic bone and very small um, fragments. So the, the fashions, of course, they keep uh, changing. But those basic principles of uh, reduction of the articular surface and neutralization of the metaphyseal combination, they continue to hold true, whatever particular method of fixation um, you are going to use. So uh, Vivek has, has outlined the current strategy for uh, open reduction. For external fixation, the strategy is kind of uh, similar where you reconstruct the articular surface with the minimal um, incisions and then use the fixator to neutralize the metaphysis. The thing to remember is the fixator is just like the uh, lock plates. Uh, it's a fixed angle construct. So th that, that is really a similarity between uh, the two. So for relatively simpler fractures, it's not a big uh, problem. You can reduce the articular surface, get the internal fixation with that and then use the fixator as a neutralization for the metaphyseal uh, region. For more comminuted um, situations, you can use just the fixator. Sometimes these fragments are so small, um, it's really not easy to get them into position and with a good uh, distraction by the fixator if you are able to get a reasonably good alignment of the uh, fragments, you are joint reconstruction is relatively okay, anatomy in a manner of speaking is uh, restored. These patients are of course likely to have arthritis um, a little earlier than later, but there is not really much more you can do with that. Bag, bag of bones kind of uh, picture. Small low velocity injuries can be tackled uh, today with just a lock plate. You don't need really a fixator. This, this was an early case, but just to show that this can be done with a percutaneous um, fashion. But where the fixator <laughs> probably has an important role is in situations where you have run into complications like uh, either a delayed union or infection or um, non-union or non-union with uh, infection like this patient who had been treated initially by um, fibular plating and a standard uh, external fixator. Um, this then went into a non-union for the tibia and as you can see probably the culprit was uh, the fibular plate which was holding it in distraction. This could also be treated by uh, internal fixation, I guess, but with the uh, fixator, I'm able to compress it exactly as much um, as is needed so that, you know, the possibility of it remaining distracted later is not an issue. So just excised a bit of the fibula and uh, put it into simple uh, compression that gives a good healing. Similarly, a comminuted fracture treated with um, a conventional fixator and this is probably one of the things that should not be done. A fixator, a putting on a bridging or a temporizing fixator is not a thing to, um, what should I say, buy time. It's not that, chalo, abhi fixator laga do, do ke baad dekhenge. The idea of this temporizing fixator is to wait only for the soft tissues to heal. And if you can try through minimally invasive methods to get the joint reduced to the best extent possible, it makes your job later on that much easier. So this was then just um, converted to a joint 
sparing sort of um, fixator. I'll, I'll show you the particular tips about the fixator um, later on, which goes on to heal um, with relative ease and good function. There is no sort of evidence to support either, um, either a plate or a fixator. Um, but there are, of course, multiple studies which show that ring fixators in these pylon fractures also have good results. And those studies do show that if a fixator is to be used, a joint sparing rather than a joint spanning um, is a better option. And in terms of joint sparing, I don't think any other fixator apart from a ring fixator would, would uh, do the job. <clears throat> so in, in our situation, if I am going to do a, a fibular fixation, I would always aim for some sort of a dynamic uh, fixation which will allow for um, collapse, which means either uh, intramedullary uh, nail or a tens, uh, tens nail or something like that, or incorporate the fibula into the um, fixator. Um, this getting your articular fixation with screws if possible is always a good idea, but that's not something which is always possible. And the use of the fixator of course allows us to get multiple wires and this is one place where olive wires um, can be used. You can, you can see a wire which has been sort of pigtailed over here and then is being used to provide compression from this side. You know? So if you use olive wires, uh, you can have fragments under compression that improves the stability of the fragments when you have multiple um, comminution. <laughs> and that's the sort of beauty of the uh, ring fixator is not only do you get fixation in, in 360 degrees this way, but you can play with the wires in the coronal uh, plane also and, there, and still get a very sound fixation uh, while being joint sparing. So in very, very small fragments, uh, that is something which is quite helpful um, when, you know, your skin is bad like this, there's no real way that you're going to get any sort of uh, internal fixation in over there, but uh, the fixator provides a reliable way of getting good fixation on that um, distal fragment. The use of uh, carbon fiber rings here makes it much easier to um, visualize if you look at um, <coughs> the earlier x-ray, you okay. You know, if that, that um, ring takes up, the metal takes up quite a bit of the x-ray versus that if you use um, a carbon fiber ring, especially in very distal fractures, you can see the joint lines uh, better. So, <coughs> Okay, this I, I'll show you this one in the. There's just one more interesting sort of continuation to this um, that I would like to show you, which is really the power of, should I say, biology and stability. Uh, this I apologize for the poor X-rays, but this is all that was available to us. This was this was a case done at uh, JJ. This guy came with this kind of a fracture at about four months um, from the initial um, injury. That's his, uh, that, was, that was the lateral view. Now, very, very small distal fragment. <coughs> and the skin was not sort of too good. With so much of a deformity, we decided, okay, let's just pull this out to length and then, you know, use some form of um, internal fixation for this. So that's, that's the uh, lateral view. You can appreciate um, that's the joint surface and just that much sort of distal surface of the uh, distal fragment, uh, which was angulated. So we put on a fixator with the idea of um, distracting this out. So nothing to hold the distal fragment, <laughs> fixator on the tibia as well as the calcaneum distracted it out to get it, um, trying to get it aligned. 
So there we've got it fairly um, well distracted and we had decided that at this point, once it is distracted, we can try and put in some fixation. But it's probably not very evident to you there, but uh, there was, when we distracted it, this out gradually, there was a little bit of uh, newborn formation over there. So we said, okay, let's, let's wait and uh, watch. And this has got really no uh, fixation on that distal fragment. There's just a little bit of bone that you can see there and over here there is early bone forming. Now you can see the um, regenerate there and here on the lateral view. Ultimately, it's, this guy started uh, walking well on the fixator and ultimately healed not in a perfect position but for, for the kind of fragment that he had in a reasonably um, good position. Mild amount of um, valgus with a good, uh, he had about 15 degrees of movement, I think this was at, at uh, removal. But that's, that's just the power of biology if, if you don't interfere with it too much and work with it, it, it really helps you. So, thank you. Thank <clears throat> you.